Hello friends, welcome back to Civil 3D Pro Trips and Tricks. This is the fifth video of our ongoing roundabout 2D design series. In previous videos, we have learned various parameters of roundabout design. We have uh, designed single lane approach and two lane approach and done some design checks. In today's video, we are we're going to see how we can design a segregated left turn lane. Huh. Well, the first thing is that why you need to provide segregated left turn lane. Well, when you uh, uh, when at your junction, uh, left turn traffic is very much high. You should uh, opt for the segregated left turn lane. Basically, uh, what it do that it takes the traffic off from the roundabout, so it has uh, increased the roundabout capacity by removing those left turn traffic and also it provides a bit of channelization and uh, safety so that's the reason you go for the segregated left turn lane when your left turn traffic is a bit high so let's see how we can design that so the, uh, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind while designing segregated left turn first thing is come is uh, separation or either you go for the physical island or you go for the uh, marking so it should be around between uh, 1.2 to 2 meter i mean depending on availability of your space so what i'll do first i go for 1.5 meter physical separation between my main roundabout and segregated left turn lane so this is the first thing you need to keep in mind that uh, separation island or marking now next thing is important that uh, you should have to provide a radius uh, based on the radius you should decide the width of the segregated left turn lane so that your vehicle can easily uh, can pass i mean you will get your vehicle tracking so what i'll do i'll do go with the trial and error uh, method so i need uh, uh go for the at least six meter just to key and save and i delete this lines and see what my curve radius i will get between those two so you can provide direct curve or you can provide compound curve uh, like that so i'll go for the direct curve and uh, give my radius to 50 you can choose your radius based on your site constraint what are the availability now if i have provided here 50 radius so based on the 50 radius you have to check your uh, uh, design standard that the 50 meter radius what would be your uh, lane width so it will be around 4.3 meter or 4.4 so i'll check whether i'm getting 4.4 meter keeping in mind my minimum 1.5 meter separation so yes i'm getting so you can uh, choose for less so instead of going uh, 6 meter i'll go for 5 meter so this is a bit of trial and error you have to do so if I choose 5 meter and then I provide any radius and see what happened. 50 meter and for 50 meter my radius would be 4.4. so yes i'm still getting my minimum 1.5 meter separation so i'll choose this and this now the next thing once you decided uh your radius would be uh, as per your site constraints and as per your requirement the next thing is come the tapering the first thing you need to taper the segregated left turn lane to the 3.5 meter lane so or we can measure the length over here and we'll decide what will be the taper length so here if you can see that i have 6.5 meter width and 6.5 minus 3.5 will be 3 meter 
so 3 into a V will provide a taper around 1 is to 20 or 1 is to 10. So my taper length would be around 60 meters. So I'll offset it to, sorry, I'll design one curve around 60 meter. And from here, it will be a 3.5 meter length. And from here, I'll just draw a taper, would be tangent to my curve. So, yep, this is now I don't need this. Same thing I'll do from here, go to tangent from this curve and 3.5. This is I provided 4.2 uh, based on the vehicle tracking and the uh, standard requirement and your standard width will be a 3.5 meter. So what you need to do is the offset from here 3.5 meter and offset 3.5 here. And this part will be a marking. So it ensures that the two vehicle will not pass together. It only uh, uses when you have a breakdown vehicle or when you have a large goods vehicle which require the rear vehicle to have extra width so it does not uh, go into your uh, uh, footway or curb so that's why you provide extra lane over here uh, to enable the large vehicle to move or the in case of the breakdown vehicle to move people can uh, two vehicle can move simultaneously so this is how it design and from here you again has to provide the taper and it will be around 1 is to 10 so 3.5 will be 35 meter so from this point it will be around 35 and from this point so this taper depend on your uh, length uh, sorry uh, your speed and other factors so you have to check your design standard what will be the taper from here what would be the taper from here what should be the standard lane width for the particular radius as per your design code you have to check that now the same thing you what you need to do is to do over here so again i'll go for uh, 60 meter and from here it will be a 3.5 meter and from this point it should be tangent to our curve uh, let me just split and again draw from this point it will be tangential to this will be around here And I don't need this again. Same thing, extend this, and from this point, it will be a tangential to my radius and to this point. Here we go. Sorry. Uh, control Z, break. So, yep, same 3.5 meter offset and extend this. So yeah, again from this point it will be a 35 meter, 1 is to 10 taper and here you go. So this is how you design your segregated light tail. Later on you do some marking. So it will look exactly as you desire. 
and just match property so it will be more clear how this is gonna work same thing over here and match property stand so yep this is your secret layer you have to hatching this area and also you have to decide your island length so the island would be from this point should be at least six meter or ten meter minimum your island will add so up to this point you can finish your island if you need to extend you can extend that the same thing we will do over here from this point should be around 10 to 15 meter again you have to check for your country core for the exact but it is advisable to have at least so this is you can extend your island up to this point but you should keep sure that it should be around minimum 1.5 meter so wherever your 1.5 meter and you will and your island and the extra part would be the hatching uh chevron marking so my 1.5 over and e here so i will end my island somewhere here so you go for 1.5 you go for 1.2 depending upon your requirement So from this point, it will be a physical island. Same thing, you have to keep up to 1.5 minimum. Somewhere here. So, yep, this is how you design your SLTL. So, the important parameter to remember is to provide a physical separation or uh, at least marking, at least 1.5 or 1.2, that uh, uh, the pedestrian could stand at least. So, you have to provide your physical uh, separation accordingly, your pedestrian requirement. The next thing you need to provide a radius, which is depend on your site constraints. And as per the, your radius, you have to decide your uh, width of the uh, SLTL, and then you have to taper again uh, to the at least 3.5 meters, so the vehicle will come at least from start of this marking. It should get at least 3.5 meter width, and from 3.5, it will be a uh, uh, widening. So uh, you have to provide taper again over here will be around 1 is to 20 that is also depending upon your speed and your country uh, codal provision same thing you will do over here and then again uh, taper down to for the lane uh, 1 is to 10 only so you have to remember taper here taper here radius width physical separation same thing taper here taper here width and physical so that's how you design your SLTL. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching this.